right hi all welcome to azure content so with this video we are going to start a new series related to microsoft fabric so microsoft fabric is a new offering by microsoft which was launched or released on 23rd may 2023 in its latest microsoft build conference okay so uh, in this video we will just introduce what is microsoft fabric and we will just see a high level of all the offerings that microsoft fabric has to give us okay so let's move ahead so our agenda in this video is to get a high level introduction of what is microsoft fabric and what are its components and there is something called one lake so we will understand on a high level what is this one lake and also how to enable and use microsoft fabric so if you have used power bi then you must be familiar with the ui of My microsoft fabric the reason for this is Microsoft Fabric has been developed on the footprints of Power BI. So if you have used Power BI, then you can relate that Microsoft Fabric has the same look and feel that Power BI gives us. Okay, so let's start with the introduction. So Microsoft Fabric is an end-to-end -end data analytics platform which means it is actually a one-stop solution for all the data professionals, okay? So you don't have to go and provision lots of uh, services in Azure like we used to do earlier. You had to provision an ADF to create your data pipelines. You had to provision your Synapse in order to write a notebook or uh, there are many offerings like uh, Azure SQL. So you had to create all these, right? But now you don't have to provision anything. Everything is already in place as a unified software as a service offering. What does this SaaS means? Okay, so to make you understand better, I have this picture which you see on the screen. So when you talk about cloud computing, there are actually three kinds of model or you can say cloud offerings. Okay, so the first one is IaaS that is called infrastructure as a service and then the other one is pass or paas that is called platform as a service and then the third one is called saas that is saas and it is uh, known as software as a service so if you see all the green uh, boxes are the ones which you have to manage and the blue ones are the one which cloud provider azure will manage okay so when we have to create an application or use an existing application, the first thing that we have to do is to take care of the uh, three things that is compute, networking and storage. So if you manage all these things by your own, then you have to create your own servers. You have to maintain the data availability um, by creating the replication of the databases and you have to take care of the networking part and storage part. You have to do your own patching. So all these things can be avoided when you go to any cloud provider such as AWS or Azure or GCP. So any public cloud provider will be able to give you all these offerings and you don't really have to think about the infrastructure part. So if these things are managed by the cloud provider, then your job is just to create your own virtual machine, create your own operating system on top of the virtual machine. And then you need to create your application by using the runtime and you can deliver your end product to the client. Okay. So this is called infrastructure as a service. As the name suggests, infrastructure is provided by the cloud provider and you don't have to worry about the infrastructure and you just have to configure all the prerequisites for creating your application and you have to create your application. So these two things you have to manage by your own as the infrastructure part is taken care by the cloud provider. So one such example of IES would be to create virtual machine on top of Azure portal. So you can just go to Azure portal and say that these are my configurations and I just want to create a VM. Uh, you don't need to worry about the server provisioning. Uh, everything will be managed by uh, Azure, but you need to create your operating system and you can start creating your application in that. Okay. So now coming to the platform as a service, not only the infrastructure part, but the platform part is also managed by the cloud provider in this case. That means you don't have to worry about server creation and data replication as well as you don't even have to worry about creation of your own OS or creation of middleware or runtime. You just have to focus on building your application and delivering it to your client. Okay. 
so this is called platform as a service and an example of this would be uh, azure sql server or you can say adf that is azure data factory synapse all these are platform as a service okay but now what they have done is they have created microsoft fabric as a software as a service okay so what does this means this means that everything is already in place and you don't have to worry about infrastructure provisioning you don't even have to worry about the platform related configurations you even do not have to worry about creating or provisioning your applications for example earlier we used to create adf we used to create synapse and then we used to work in that right now we don't even have to do this part we just need to go inside microsoft fabric and we just need to start using it to develop our solution so for an example you might be using few products which are actually a saas product like microsoft outlook which we use for delivering our emails and we use teams right microsoft teams these are all saas products so we just need to use it we do not need to create any application on top of it right and also you might have used power bi right this is also a saas offering where you do not need to do anything you just need to go ahead and create your own data set or reports so you don't have to worry about even the platform related things so now as i told microsoft fabric is coming along as a software as a service so the only prerequisite in order to start using microsoft fabric is that you should have the internet connection and you should enable the microsoft fabric account okay and we will discuss about how to enable that as well in later part of our video so now you might have got an idea of what microsoft fabric is it is basically an end to end data analytics platform which has been released as a saas product that means software as a service offering by microsoft okay and it provides a single integrated environment for all the data professionals that means if you are a data engineer or if you are a data analyst or if you are a data scientist so all these data professionals can work in a single integrated environment called microsoft fabric okay and also it helps us to ingest store process and analyze data so we can say that it's a one stop solution for all the data professionals like data engineers analyst and data scientist okay so now talking about the offerings of microsoft fabric it is highly scalable which means it can handle large amount of users as well as large amount of transactions or workloads okay and it is cost effective as well so as a user we are always worried about how much cost we have to pay in order to use this service right so since it is coming along as a saas product so the cost will be very less as compared to the other services and it is highly accessible as well as i told the only thing that you require in order to use microsoft fabric is internet okay and then the continuous upgrades and maintenance would be provided by microsoft as was provided in any other azure services okay and what are the things that can be done using microsoft fabric these are all listed here and these are termed as experiences so in total we have seven experiences inside microsoft fabric starting from power bi so you can create your own power bi report inside fabric you can create your data pipelines inside data factory there is something called data activator which is still in preview but using that you can monitor all your other services and you can also create triggers and alerts using data activator and then data engineering is nothing but a synapse offering where you can create your notebooks spark job definition data pipelines everything what was there in synapse can be done in synapse data engineering and then there comes synapse data science where you can train your machine learning models and then the data warehouse capability that we already had in synapse that is dedicated sql pool and serverless sql pool so similar to that we have synapse data warehouse where you can store your data and perform data modeling and data warehousing concepts like creating dim tables fact tables and all those things okay and then we have synapse real time analytics where we can perform data analysis on top of uh, very large amount of data or we can say big data using some kql language that is kusto query language so we will see everything practically in upcoming videos so now talking about the components of fabrics as we have already seen these things in previous slide we have data integration data engineering data warehousing data science real time analytics 
then business intelligence that is creating your power bi reports and then insights to the action that is coming soon which means data activator will allow you to uh, have an insights on all the other services okay which means monitoring your uh, data pipelines or uh, creating alerts and metrics so all those things is possible using all these experiences in microsoft fabric okay and then the most important thing is there is something called one lake so one lake is basically a logical lake of data inside fabric okay so it's called logical lake of fabric okay so what is this uh, let's see everything in details so one lake is basically fabrics lake centric architecture which is also called single logical lake so all the experiences or all the components of microsoft fabric can directly interact with this one lake so if you have data in the one lake using that single copy of data you can create your own data pipeline you can train your machine learning language model or you can create your power bi reports or you can perform the data analysis so everything can be done only using one copy of data inside your one lake okay so we will see everything in details so one lake is a single unified logical data lake for whole organization and you can think of one lake as a one drive for your data so if you have used one drive there you can access every products or every services like ms excel or you can access your sharepoint or one note so all the components are together present inside one drive so using one drive how you can interact with all the other components so similarly using one lake you can interact with all the other components or experiences inside fabric and you might have noticed that when you create your microsoft account or your outlook account then one drive comes along with it you do not have to explicitly create your one drive so similar to that if you have your power bi account or fabric account so one lake comes along with it you do not have to create one lake for your data so one lake comes automatically with every fabric tenant okay and one lake is built on top of adls that is azure data lake storage which is the storage offering of azure okay and data can be stored in one lake in any of the formats like csv json delta parquet etc and the data resides in one lake as an open format and if you have a tabular data you can read the data as a delta parquet format so this is the default format of the data how the data will be residing inside one lake is in the delta parquet format if you have not given any explicit format so the tabular data will be stored in the most compressed format that is the parquet format and as i told one copy is the key component of one lake which allows you to read the data from a single copy so that we do not have to create multiple replication of a single data um, for using in different different experiences inside fabric okay so a single copy of data will be used in every components or every experiences inside fabric and there is something called shortcuts which is very important inside microsoft fabric it is basically an embedded reference within one lake so if you have data in some external storage or internal to fabric as well so you can reference to this data using something called shortcuts okay so if you have data in aws account or if you have data in gcp or any other cloud providers or even inside fabric if you have data you can create a shortcut inside fabric which will be acting as a reference toward to this data so using shortcut we are not copying or moving the data we are just creating a reference to that data store we are just creating a reference to internal or external data store okay so it is very important we will learn deeply in upcoming videos and now coming to how to enable microsoft fabric so who can enable microsoft fabric for you in your organization you can look for any fabric administrator or power platform administrator or microsoft 365 administrator so you need any of these permissions in order to enable microsoft fabric and microsoft fabric can be enabled either at organization level or at capacity level which means either you can give access to the whole organization or you can create a specific group or user 
and give access to a particular uh, group or a user and that is called capacity level okay and the other necessary thing is you need to have a trial license in order to access fabric account so what so how you will get that so let me copy this link and let me paste it in the browser so here you need to provide your email id for which you want the trial license to be enabled so once you do that your trial subscription will be ready which will be valid for 60 days okay so once your admin team enables microsoft fabric and once your trial license is ready then you can go ahead and try using microsoft fabric and the other most important thing is if you are already a power bi user and your organization is already using power bi then you do not have to explicitly enable microsoft fabric the good thing is it is already enabled for you so you can just start using it directly okay so let me just show you how your fabric account would look like okay so once everything is in place for you you will see this kind of ui which is similar to power bi ui okay and here you can see the power bi icon as well once you click on that you can see all the components of fabric as i already told in the slides so we have all these things that we talked about so we have power bi data factory data activator then data engineering data science data warehouse real time analytics you can go inside any of these experience and you can simply start creating your solution and here you can see one link which can store your data and can be accessed by any of these experiences okay so we will learn about each and everything in details in upcoming videos so please stay tuned so now i think you got a little bit idea about microsoft fabric so let's do a quick knowledge check and let's try to answer these queries first one is which of the following is a key benefit of using microsoft fabric in data projects the first option is it allows data professionals to work on data projects independently without the need for collaboration or it requires duplication of data across different systems and teams to ensure data availability or it provides a single integrated environment for data professionals and the business to collaborate on data projects so you might be sensing that its answer should be the third option since the first option says it does not give the need for collaboration but it is not the case in fact it gives more control over the collaboration between all the data professionals and it is single integrated environment and there is no need of duplication so this option will also not be true so the right option is the third one okay and then the second question is what is the default storage format for fabrics one lake so we have discussed in our video that delta packet format is the default storage for one lake okay and now let's jump to the last question which of the following fabric workloads is used to move and transform data is it data science or data warehousing or data factory so if you have worked with adf you know that adf or azure data factory is the tool which is used to move and transform data so in this case data factory should be the correct option so let's check if our answers are correct or not so you can see it has given everything is correct as we predicted and if you want to read the information here it says fabrics one lake provide a single integrated environment for data professionals and the business to collaborate on data project that's why third option is the correct one in the first question and then for the second question the default storage format of one lake is delta packet which is an open source storage layer that brings reliability to data lakes and coming to the third one it says data factory workload combines power query with the scale of azure data factory to move and transform data so if these answers were not in your mind then please comment below for any of the doubts i will try to clarify as much as i can okay so that's it for this video guys i hope you like the video please stay tuned and please hit on like button and please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done it yet thank you